Well, my favorite part um, of the story of Rock and Chair Ridge is kind of where we're sitting at now. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the, the story is that you were on the verge of like, should we buy this piece of property? Should we not buy it? I mean, what do we do? It's a lot of money. Yeah. That could really, you know, we could be doing a lot of different things. Yeah. And you being who Cody Altizer is, you know, you, you knew what to do. You had to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's how I find a solution to a lot of my problems in life is to go for a walk in the woods and like you said it's such a big investment. I mean, time, money, resources, mm -hmm. that money could go to other things and I was looking for some kind of sign, honestly. I'm a spiritual person and was looking for something to let me know if this piece of property was the right decision for us to invest our future in. And I went for a walk one day in February in the dead of winter. I was honestly hoping to find a big shed antler that was the goal that was my sign i was looking for but better even than that i kicked up a rough grouse on this part of the property our favorite obviously deer but it's it's a very close first uh it, it's yeah and where we're at this is where the grouse tendons that are that do reside on your property excuse me this is where they're at yeah we're in their home yeah and you did you know cuts throughout the property but you know sometimes you don't want to go in there and like in this and just destroy it right to rebuild it up again then yeah. then where did they go right exactly. no that's exactly it we were we had a plan for this part of the property and the plan was to do some cutting open up the canopy let sunlight hit the forest floor but we wanted to do it with grouse in mind first and foremost. I mean, we could have come in here and, and cut every tree and deer would have responded to it just yeah. fine. Whatever management we do, deer are, going to, yeah. deer are going to be okay. Grouse, they need a specific type of environment or habitat. They are more vulnerable and susceptible to, to, to different types of situations. So I wanted to tailor make this area because I knew grouse were already here. I wanted to improve it for them. And you and I talk a lot about having a plan, being intentional with the decisions that we make. And Absolutely. what we're gonna do now is kind of just walk through this area where we did some cutting, we did some hack and squirt, and we're gonna explain why we did, mm -hmm. what we did for grouse. Yeah. And what I see so far is we, we pulled up this area and it was like, I had a big smile on face like that. You did a great job from afar. Yeah. And now we're standing in it and yeah, there's so many tactics. There's so many ways to attack things instead of just, you gotta just be smart about it. Yeah. And you you and your, your dad and your brother, you guys can tell you that this is a lot of work and I, hey, enough talking, let's get to showing you, so. Yeah. Yep. So the number one thing that you were trying to accomplish with this this project, this grouse project, was not to do anything too, too drastic yeah. and wrong. And we're standing in front of something that could have been very wrong for the grouse, yeah. what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, this right here is what I wanted to avoid. This whole area where we did this project is about a, two and a half acres, and I wanted to avoid two and a half acres of this. This is where I flush cut, I don't know, six or eight trees, and this is the direction that they fell, and it made this big brush pile, which little pockets of this in an area isn't the worst thing. I mean, it, it protects seedlings from being over browsed by deer. A grouse could nest in here, a turkey could nest in here. It's good for songbirds. It's, this isn't a bad thing in small pockets, but if I were to, if we had an entire area of this, this is what I wanted to avoid. So I wanted to be intentional in how I went about cutting and treating the area with herbicide to avoid an area just like that and make it functional for grouse and other wildlife. Yeah. And that's one thing that we discussed when you were prior to doing the project and during the project was um, not to make a giant disturbance here. Yeah. Because you know you had you had an opportunity where you could have came in here and did some clear cutting and stuff. But this is where the grouse reside. Yeah. We don't want to try to help too much right. <laughs> and kick them out yeah. and then it's like oh what do we do now yeah. but no what you did in the types of cuts explain that or the style that you were doing it yeah yeah so we probably cut probably 40 percent of the trees and treated the rest with herbicide and the trees that we cut again like i was really selective my dad and i how we went about cutting the trees because a lot of the trees in this area it's i mean the stem count was off the charts it's pole timber i mean most of them about that size the bigger trees about as big around as my waist 
So the trees that I wanted to completely flush cut and bring to the ground, I picked the trees with the biggest crown because that's going to be more cover and more structure on the forest floor. Biggest amount of canopy with, while doing the least amount of work. It's, I mean, when you look to cut a tree, look up when you're deciding which tree to cut. You can cut one tree that opens a big hole in the canopy or you can cut 12 trees that doesn't accomplish the same thing. So we were selective and intentional in the trees that we cut. And then the, other, the rest, we hacked and squirted a lot of the smaller ones. The mid-sized trees we girdled and treated with herbicide. And in doing so, we really diversify the type of response we're going to get in here. Like I said, the flush cut trees create structure, stump sprouts, the trees that we treated with herbicide, they're gonna slowly die, but they're still gonna let sunlight hit the forest floor and the plant response is gonna be diverse, which is what you want for sure. Yeah, because one thing that we always talk about is that when you manage for deer, you manage for other species. This is reverse. We were intentionally managing for grouse and guess what? <laughs> we, we, yeah, other wildlife is very, that's why it's so important to, you know, hey, let's, you know, you can accomplish so much yeah. by doing it almost the same thing and just using a different little, just a little bit different mentality. Right. And you were talking about the sunlight hitting the forest floor. Grouse, they eat over like 300 species of food yeah. and we are gonna put some groceries on the ground by how smart you were by uh, the types of, you know, girdling and hack and squirt and putting stuff on the ground horizontal. We created, we, like I did it all. <laughs> I wasn't, was I around? <laughs> <laughs> I worked from afar, I was in here in spirit. But, you know, Cody and his dad and his brother, they created, uh, you know, drum and log opportunities and stuff, you know. It, it's, it, this, when I seen this was very, again, it was a lot of work. Yeah. But it was a job well done. This is perfect. When these uh, trees that you hacked and squirt and double girdled die, it's gonna provide so much. Yeah, this area is gonna to come to life. I mean, here's some wing stem right here. I mean, it's only the middle of May. A lot of the trees that we treated with herbicide, they're slowly dying. So as the growing season progresses, only more and more sunlight is gonna hit the forest floor. And we didn't kill 100% of the trees. We did leave some seed trees, some shade. We want this to be a gradual process. Like Eric said, we, don't, we didn't want this to be a big shock to their system because there already are grouse in the area. We just want to gradually improve upon what they have already found useful and valuable. Yeah. And another reason why you left these trees, and this is why, because I know you're smart enough, is that for avian predators. Yeah. We wanted some structure in there left in there so the avian predators have a harder time. You know, the thunderhawks thunder coming. Hawks, lightning thunder falcons. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. No, it's all good. Let's go look around some more. Yeah. Tell, let's see what Cody did wrong. Yeah. Now, I'm excited that you were proud of this project because I've I asked you a handful of times, like, what percentage should I cut? What percentage should I treat with herbicide? Because I knew that I could do more harm than good if I didn't have a plan and I weren't careful. And this actually right here is another good example of why I didn't want to create just an entire mess of trees. I wanted to be able to navigate through here myself because I knew, I mean, sunlight hitting the forest floor, obviously that's what we want in the form of a native forbs and grasses, but I mean, this Japanese stilt grass is, I would have bet anything under my name that, that there would be stilt grass in this area. And I, I want to be able to get back in here, navigate through this area with a backpack sprayer and treat this. If I had just cut all these trees and piled up a bunch of brush, I wouldn't be able to get through here and spot spray invasives, stilt grass, autumn olive, barberry. I mean, there's going to be dozens of, of plants to treat, but here, as you can see, this is a tree that we treated with herbicide, girdled. It's a black locust and um, yeah, it's dead. I mean, if you look up, that's the hole it created in the canopy. That's the amount of sunlight that's hitting the forest floor and the plant response is going to be significant. Obviously some invasives, we'll treat those as we see them, but what's the name of the game? Stump sprouts, again, I mean, if, if you're familiar with the research done by Mississippi State, you take a tree, when this tree was standing, it wasn't useless to wildlife, but you cut the tree clean off. All of the energy in the root system gets fed up 
to the stump sprouts and these leaves are highly preferred by deer. I'm actually surprised that they haven't found these yet. And the nutritional content, the palatability of these leaves from a stump sprout as opposed to when the leaves are standing 20, 30, 40 feet in the air, this rivals that of a white-tailed deer's favorite forbs, ragweed, pokeweed. The nutritional content and palatability is equal to equal to those forbs. So here's food. We've got cover behind us. We've got areas that we can navigate to to treat invasives. And yeah, I'm excited. This was a, a project that could have gone wrong if we weren't careful, but we took the right steps to make sure we did it the right way. Oh, seriously, I'm not pandering here. This is so well done. The grouse, it's gonna, I think the grouse are going to instantly uh, you know, utilize this uh, more, it's more beneficial for them. And again, it's not a big giant shock to their, you know, their home and, and stuff. And we just made a little bit of home improvement. Yeah. And with something that we can build on and go next section, next section, next section. And um, yeah, this is, this is great. All right, and again, I think for this project, this type of environment, it's good to have a visual to see what we accomplished and what the area was bef was before we came in here and fired up the saws. And right here, we're kind of in the thick of it. I mean, right here, there are some trees that we flush cut. You can see mineral stumps. You can see the plant response on the forest floor. If you look up, you can see the hole in the canopy that we created all that sunlight coming down. We've got all kinds of plants that have responded on the forest floor. There's an oak seedling, wild grape, all kinds of great stuff. I've seen ragweed up here. So, but if you walk through, and again, there's thick cover for brush. There's some grape. This is also good nesting or fawning cover for deer, nesting cover for turkeys. It's an easy spot to avoid predators, horizontal cover, here's some coral berry, native shrub response, I see green briar poking up through there. But as you walk through and you leave the area, the project area, you can, it's a pretty noticeable difference. I mean, we're already in the shade, feels better because it's 95 degrees today but you can see behind me biological desert if you turn around and face where we just came from look at the sunlight look at the plant response and that's only the middle of may i mean we've got you know three four months left to growing season and when you can compare what you've done what you've accomplished versus what the area was and it for me, it just gives you added incentive, more confidence that you're doing the right thing, you're making a positive difference, and you can just, I don't know, if I were a grouse, where would I rather be? Down over here in a biological desert, or where we just came from, where there's food, cover, nesting cover, nesting opportunities, drumming logs. I mean, I'm no grouse, but the, <laughs> the answer and the choice is easy for me. Hopefully we made it easy for the grouse as well. Now, each date, throughout this country has uh, a story that it's not very proud of and that is having species on the dangerous list special interest list you know etc it's a it's a blemish you know on the story of conservation within the state and stuff and there's a lot of things that it's out of a lot of people's control but it's still something that it's the elephant in the room and we're dealing with species right now year 2022 something a species several species some some are heading down the wrong road so fast and then there's some they're just getting on the road of hey what is going on and the rough grouse is one of them uh cody and i we've done you know tried to bring a lot of attention to the rough grouse situation but here's the thing is that the rough grouse society can only do so much everybody knows what to do same thing with the wild turkey. Everybody's aware that it is predation, it is habitat loss, it's all this stuff. But everybody is just talking about it. Yeah. There's very little action. And God bless those people that are actually not voicing, but actually doing. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. And just what the project that Cody did. Yeah, there was grouse already here, but you are giving the grouse a future here. 
and just doing it smart. Yeah. You know, by doing hardcore clear cuts for the future and, and then smart decisions like this where it's just, just enough. But the rough grouse needs our help so bad. It's, it's a conservation story that I'm, I know I am so sick and tired when we talk about rough grouse is that everybody has that comment. I remember 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I used to hunt grouse. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't know why they're not there anymore. Cut the damn tree. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Now, unfortunately, these species are not like migratory where they're flying around looking for a clear cut. But the areas that they are in, we can, we are the greatest conservation story, the sportsmen. You know, we can make this happen. We can change the direction by instead of just talking, we can do, and this is doing. I mean, this was a lot of hard work, but this was just a couple weekends type of deal. Yeah. You can get this done and you can accomplish the white-tailed deer scenario. You can accomplish, I mean, the songbirds, all that stuff. It doesn't matter if you're a sportsman. Song, people that are into the non-game, we need your help as well by going out there and doing some chainsaw management. If, you know, just by looking at birds through binoculars doesn't help that species. You have to do more as well. We need everybody, like Cody said, boots on the ground. There is a situation. And by God, I'm not going to have my hands bloody. Cody's not going to have his hands bloody. We're going to do whatever it takes. We're going to be advocates. We want you to be advocates for the species. Again, the Rough Grouse Society, the Woodcock Society, PF, DU, all of us should be working together. There's enough resources financially that we can be pulling and helping each other. Let us be the story that people tell in the future. You know, let us be the Aldo Leopold. I know that sounds corny, but let us be the Aldo Leopold of our time. Uh, it's just so frustrating. So it is, it's so frustrating to have this happen on our watch. And, um, but on a positive thing, positive side, we can make that difference. We can yeah. do things better. And, um, you know, just like it is for you, wildlife. It's our way of life. It's our way of life.